What is going on, everybody? Jay Hayes up in this mother... You better get your daddy on the phone. Hello, Chicken Little. Today we're gonna be doing a review on a device that I was sent for the purposes of the review. Now, let me just give you a quick back brief on this company. I really don't have any. All I'm gonna tell you is what I do know. And what I do know is that the owner of this company that makes this device, uh, uh, QP Design, I think that's what it is. It may be QD Design. It also may be uh, BQ, like Burger King. There's no Q and King. Not quite sure what it is. I think it's QP Design. Someone had posted in Wix and Calls, the Facebook group, and said, you know, look, this device is coming out, Jay. Hold on, I got my ass crack sticking to the back of the chair. That's always uncomfortable, especially if you have the top hair on your ass crack and that gets intertwined with your belt and as you move it pulls out your top ass crack hair. Yeah, that's not fun. Someone in the Facebook group, Wicks and Calls, had said, Jay, there's this tank coming out. Are you interested? I was very, very interested. But they weren't like the seller of the company. They were just showing me a picture, asking if I would do a review on it. Well, long story short, I find their Facebook. I'm like, hey, man, I want to do a review on your tank. Where do I buy it from? They said, mm-mm, you don't need to buy it, mm-mm. We're gonna send it to you. I said, you don't need to send it. Just tell me where to buy it. This is how the conversation went down. No, we'll send it. Don't worry about it. It's your birthday. Happy birthday, daddy. I, it was weird that they called me daddy, but I accepted it. Then he's like, the owner wants to go into the Facebook group where the discussion was being held for Juggernaut RTS. I said, okay, invited him in. Boom, boom, pow, pow. Shit went down, never got it. it. Was like, what the fuck? So I emailed them, and I, I know this story is like, <laughs> I know this story is so random, but I'm getting somewhere. I messaged them on Facebook, said, hey man, what's up with the tank? They said, hey man, it's it's en route. It's it's come to us, and then we're gonna send it to you. I said, don't worry about it. I just buy it online. Tell me where to buy it. There's nowhere to buy it online, so I have to get it from you. Okay, that's fine. Long story short, I get it in the mail. Now, normally, I do not open the packages prior to doing a review. I do the review, I use the device, I bring it back on top and I'll let you know my final thoughts on the device. Well, when I got this, the first thing I did, I was in the middle of a Patreon chat and I opened up this box and lo and behold, when I opened up this box, my heart fell out of my chest. For some reason, I feel like someone could put a price tag on me, not being corny, not trying to be funny. Not a price tag where someone can buy me out and me just say a positive thing. Someone knows how to kick me in the crotch without physically kicking me. Not a bad thing. If you could think about being kicked in the crotch on a positive fashion, do you see this little thing dangling from this box right here? That is essentially a price tag that you would put on a yard sale product. But it means a lot to me. You know why it means a lot to me? Because it has my name written by penmanship with a regular, I'm just gonna say a roller ball ink pen. So you can see this little tag right here it says J on the side. We're gonna open this up. Now inside of this box is not only the RTA, but it's a personal love letter from the owner to myself. And I love when a man can sit down and write me a note and keep a straight face and realize that my transsexuality, I mean my sexuality has nothing to do with the review. You know what I'm talking about. Shut your mouth. Shut your mouth. Shut it. Let's flip this shit. Juggernaut by QP Design. There's really not a whole lot on this box. It's kind of scarce in a sense, uh, but on the flip side of that, this is the little tag I was showing you guys that has J written on the side. Truly 100% thoughtful. Oh my God, just phenomenal. Pull up top fill, no leaking, postless deck, top airflow to coil design. So this is something, we've seen this top airflow to coil design on a couple tanks before. It's nothing new. As far as high end though that has a top airflow, there's really not many. Multiple tank options, six mil fat tank, which is like the bubble ultim, four mil, four mil glass, stainless steel design. Due to the way that this is shaped, the base is going to be only 24, but as it's shaped and even even keeping the consistency of the regular cylindrical glass, it's going to make it appear that it's 28 millimeters. So let's go ahead and open this up. This is the note I wanted to show you. I don't know if this person wants me to put that note out there, but this is from the owner. Now, this might not seem like anything to anybody, but this is truly a thoughtful process. Putting a note into a tank that you're making, that you know, you're not really giving out to a lot of reviewers, 
It means a lot to me, man. It really, really does. That will in no shape or form affect my rating. However, in a sense, it sort of will. Uh, one of my patrons had mentioned to me, I believe it was Chris. He was saying that, you know, all oh, that's going to affect the rating. And I took it like he meant, I'm going to give it more points because of the note that's personalized. When in reality, I'm not. What he meant was, at least this is what I'm taking it as, is that the customer service is extremely, extremely important. Usually I don't go over customer service and let that affect my rating because 95% of the time these companies that are sending you the devices, whether you're buying it or getting it for free to get a hold of them is gonna be very, very difficult. So customer service does not usually play a role in my rating. So today I'll let it affect it in a way that it's not gonna be too ridiculous. I mean, I'll give it a point for the customer service. So let's get into the actual device in question. What you're looking at on the right is the RTA. It is not an RDTA. I know a lot of people are seeing this and thinking that it's an RDTA or it's some type of awkward collaboration of the both when in reality this is an RTA. I will break it down for you. You have an Allen key, some extra O-rings, and some screws. Normal size Allen key, nothing we haven't seen before. Multiple glass options. This is the 4 mil straight cylindrical glass. That The cloudiness is because of me touching it and holding it and putting it together, putting a build in it. That's the reason why it looks somewhat what dirty Ultim, which in fact does look like it is a polished Ultim in a sense. And then you have the large Ultim that is on the tank. So we'll go ahead and put this aside for now. We'll keep those glasses out just so I can use this as a reference point. I'm not a huge fan of the way that they spell Juggernaut, but hey, listen, if that's the way that they do it, that's the way that they do it. On your top, you're going to have your 810 or Grenadine drip tip, which is in fact polished as well. So it's a little... It's a little slippery upon coming out. I find the best way to take a drip tip out like this that's in this fashion is kind of push up on the top and then push on the bottom because squeezing it to grab it to pull it out is going to be very difficult as it is polished. And that does in fact match the smaller tank configuration. Any A10 that you do have will fit in this perfectly fine. These little facets you see that are all over this have a really badass look to it. Not really sharp, but you do feel them and notice them that they are there. On the bottom says Juggernaut QP number 401. So, I mean, we can at least agree that there's at least 500 of these made. Your airflow is going to be on the top up here, and that is going to be adjustable with just turning this ring right here, and it is dual-sided. So you have it on both sides. The way that this is fashioned is right where the airflow is is where the chimney essentially is going to end up for it to line up perfectly with the coils that are inside the tank. We've kind of seen this before in the OBS nano engine. We've seen it in another sub ohm tank. It's this is not anything of the new, but it is for a high-end RTA. Push that up and then there is your fill port. This does not, I repeat, does not come off and you don't have to take the drip tip out to fill it. You kind of just fill it and then push this down. It doesn't have any kind of locking. As much as you twist this, it does absolutely nothing. I do feel it should have some type of locking mechanism though, so once you put it in, it doesn't just flop up. So to take this apart, we're gonna go ahead and unscrew the bottom. Couple threads you see here, and it only goes in one way, and then you screw it in. As you're tightening the bottom, if you're holding on to the airflow adjustment ring, you're gonna be spinning this for a long time because it's never gonna stop spinning. Because again, this is free spinning. Take this out, you're going to hold the tank and kind of unscrew it right there. And as you unscrew it, just give it a little bit of a pull and then it'll come out. We'll go over the deck in a second. To replace the tank, if you don't like the bubble tank option, you can go ahead and take that off and then put either the straight Ultimon, which is going to cut it down by two mils, or you could do the straight glass, which in my opinion looks the best. Really, the only thing that resembles it is nothing, really. I guess the placement of the bubble tank, so it does not, in fact, look like the Sherman. This is a very, very unique looking RTA, something we haven't seen before. This is pretty crazy. I am not quite sure as to how you get this apart. It's machined very, very, very well. And I haven't really ever done this. I think I've done this maybe on two videos and I'm sorry for the background noise and the air circumventing around me as I do this. But basically I wanted to give you a quick update. I had spoke to the owner in regards to the issues that I was having when I was making the review. I said in the review that the item does not come apart and I was 100% incorrect saying so. I've been using this RTA religiously like absolutely love this rta rating still stays the same but it's a very very good rta even if you were to try to take this apart you cannot do it 
everything that's put on, as far as once you take the glass off and the deck, you can't separate any of this because it's all pressure fitted on. I was always under the impression that if you could get something on after you machine it, you could always get it off. I'm not saying that if you get a pair of pliers or monkey grips or channel locks and you try to rip on it to try to take it apart, it won't do that. I'm sure it will. However, this was not, I repeat, not designed to be taken apart. The chimney that's going to house your actual coils does spin free and that's due to the fact of lining up the deck. I'm sure this does in fact come apart. It's just not very easy uh, to take apart. It's not something that's going to be very easy for you to take apart. Right here is where your juice is going to come in at. You really cannot tell but right there where I have the screwdriver is your juice and then your airflow is in fact on this barrel or pillar mechanism where it's going to come up the side of this metal chimney and then go to the airflow right there on the side. I don't ever want to hear that I don't do shit for you guys because I tried to take this apart and I nicked the shit out of this up. Kind of fucking pisses me off, but there, I, I can't, where this is right here, this ring I feel would come off, but I've grabbed this piece with just monkey grips or channel locks and uh, of course rubber coated, but even twisting it enough, it doesn't do anything. As you can see, it kind of slipped off and nicked it right there. It sucks very much that this is nicked, but I guess it's just gonna suffer battle wounds. Deck is kind of something we've seen before. There is multiple configurations here. So down here, this is gonna be a positive block where you see these two lovely ports. It is essentially postless as you're gonna build your coils like this, and then the cotton is gonna go down here in these channels, which keep in mind are extremely vast. That is a lot of cotton. However, you're running a dual coil configuration. You could, if you were so inclined to run just a single across here, like there, like there, and just lots of cotton here or you could run it in dual. Now, being that this is a four mil or six mil tank, respectively speaking, running a two coil configuration with the six mil tank, it just seems like that's the way it's going to go. The machining on this is absolutely impeccable. I mean, you take a look at this machining. This is designed in Canada. I think it is safe to say though, this is machined elsewhere. Whoever did machine this is really, really good. One of the flaws I see with this right off the bat before I put coils in is the airflow is actually a straight shot. As it hits this, it's going to go straight up. Really, you're not gonna have direct airflow on the coils. What you're gonna need to do is kind of move your coil over so it's as much over that airflow as possible. There was another tank I did that kind of has the same configuration. I do believe it's the Reload RTA. Surprisingly enough, that's not actually sharp where those little peaks are. You're definitely gonna need to move your coils so they're more over this airflow situation on both sides. Just like that how is how you open up the post, which reminds me, I think the Faro. I've just done so many drippers and tanks, I really can't remember which dripper had what. It's definitely machined well, I like it. What I like to do when I have an RTA that has dual coils like this, you know, side by side on a pulseless deck, I'll make one leg longer on this side to go over here and then shorter on the opposite side and then the same thing over here. So this way each port is individualized for each coil that's on there. Real simple and we're working with a 0.38 build. Do you see these edges here? You're gonna line those up with the tank like that. And try not to force it, you know, right? When you feel a catch, that's good. Screw it on down. There is that double O-ring. There's O-ring on the actual chimney part where the pillars are, and then there's another O-ring that's on the top that catches the top of the tank. And it doesn't look that bad. Looks pretty good. I really like it with the clear glass. I just wish I didn't have that delicious nick. I, I guess you really can't see it that bad. Basically, we're just gonna pop this open just like that. This is only a four mil tank. I would have love to have seen a six mil bubble tank option, but it doesn't really look that bad. It does kind of have that faro aspect where it's skinnier on the bottom, bigger in the middle, and then skinnier on the top again. It just has kind of a weird appearance to it, but it's nothing that's too crazy that we haven't seen before. The most delightful thing with this is your top airflow is so adjustable that it, I just feel this is gonna be an absolute delicious vape. And it's gonna be very difficult for you to get this to leak due to the fact that the way that the airflow comes in. Even if you didn't build it properly in the chamber, the likelihood 
of this actual leaking is you're gonna need to tilt it on its side because there's no way it's coming through the bottom. Find a black drip tip, chubby chubby Bo Bubby. Bubby, isn't that from uh, Pineapple Express? Yeah, his Bubby, James Franco's Bubby. It's his grandma. This is the drip tip that comes with the Advocin. Advi Advocin, C-P-R-T-A. Let's bring it on the top and I'll give you my final thoughts on the QP Design Juggernaut RTA with the clear four mil option. Back on top of the Juggernaut RTA by QP Design sitting on top of the Snow Wolf Plus, I believe. It's one of the Snow Wolves. It's not the really big one, the super heavy one. It's the one that just recently came out. 51 watts is what we are working with. This is a straight Canthal build with the core. I don't know if I mentioned that. That was a dual 28 core with 36 on the outside. Let me show you some of the vape production. Wait till you hear how quiet this airflow is now that is wide open on the top on both sides there is no way to close off just one side you kind of close off both sides or no sides that's all you get here's the vapor production pump this up we're gonna go to 64.5 watts same build everything's the same I can go ahead and lock it there it is 64.5 watts same exact build here we go wide open oh shit yeah let me tell you something wow uh yeah that hits nice vapor production is fantastic the airflow the silence of it is fantastic so if i was to rate the flavor on this alone just the flavor i would go in that seven region i would love to go 7.5 now we're talking about just the flavor we're not talking about the tank as a whole i feel that if the airflow at some way or fashion at the bottom where it comes in it would come at an angle would make it that much better so if you're already familiar with the airflow style that comes with the reload rta you'd be very very familiar with this it's sort of the same type of fashion it's a little bit bigger on this than it is on the reload RTA and that's rightfully so just because of the way that the chamber or the deck is built on this the machining on this thing is absolutely phenomenal I mean it is phenomenal I get it it's not made in Canada but it's still phenomenal it's just like the steam crave Titan that I did made in China of course it's a huge block of metal I don't know how you jack that up this isn't that case I mean it's not a huge block of metal it's a typical RTA that most people would see the Sherman the Pangea all these things are of massive caliber of sizes but they still perform well this doesn't fall short in that category One one thing you might find though is if you do have it on a mod like what it's on right now it's going to be a little top heavy just due to the fact of this being a 28 millimeter it makes it a little weeble wobbly like jimmy jamming it i don't really have a lot of words for this the fact that it has just listen to the airflow it's wide open 65 watts Super, super quiet RTA. I mean, absolutely super. It's like you can't even hear anything. The only way you know you're vaping is you feel it because you can't hear it. So maybe if you cut it down, it'll whistle or do some kind of dance or something, make some kind of screeching noise. I don't know. Here we go. Half cut. Half cut. Wow, that... Okay. If anybody's half circumcised, I don't know what to say at this point. Same thing. It's cut in half. This tank performs really, really well. So let's go over some of the fallbacks. First off, the fallback, number one. Got a couple fallbacks on this. This is what I'm working with. Number one, taking this thing apart is a mission. I mean, it is a mission. Unless I'm that little three-year-old kid trying to fit a square peg in a round circle, you know, little plastic toy jammies by Play School. If I'm trying to do that, then by all means, I am not all right in the head. And there's, I have some type of mental incapacitation as to why I cannot figure out how this separates. I know that a lot of people don't really need to separate this, but I really wanted to see how that airflow was going into the chimney, but I just could not take it apart. I obviously could take the glass off in the deck, but you can't separate the 
chimney with the top piece and it clearly has to separate because there's moving parts number two is the airflow i feel the airflow should be either angled more or placed in a different type of fashion maybe go up a little higher and then hit it from the side because right now where it's at you can't really use ridiculously large coils you can fit them in here i'm not denying that the larger the coils are yeah, you're going to get more over that airflow versus something that's small, but somewhere right in the middle when I build 3.2 inner diameter, it's having a bit of an issue trying to move all the way over to the right. I did it as much as possible, which is pretty much underneath it. I feel at single coil, this wouldn't really excel very well just because, so if the coils here, your airflows are here, the airflows are going to go straight up. I get it that it might bounce around in the chimney or something and hit the coil, but it's not going to be a very good vape. It's going to be quite drab, but you could do it if you were so inclined. And then number three is kind of a small thing, but I'm not a huge fan of 24 to 28 to 36 to 31. I don't like when tanks have this whole bottling effect, like an upside down, but no, that's not right. Well... It's kind of, right, like a flask maybe? No, hourglass. It's the exact opposite of an hourglass. I had a problem describing this before, like where it's fatter in the middle than skinnier on the top and bottom. Like a squished marshmallow. That wouldn't be right either because when you squish a marshmallow, it all turns fat. If you were to ask me the flavor profile that I'm getting out of this tank, I would say is pretty high up there. It's not the best RTA that I've ever tried. I do like the machining of it. I do like the way the deck is. I do like that it's top airflow. There's a lot of positive things that I have for this tank for what it's worth. I think it's a very, very good tank. I mean, it's up there. So how would I rate this on a zero to 10, this device right here. I would put it somewhere in the 7.5 block. But as I said before, I have to give it a point for customer service due to the fact of the note being in there, him telling me, you know, thank you for everything that you do. I'm not gonna give a full point, but I will give half a point due to that customer service. So we're gonna go to an eight. 8.5, it would be very difficult for this to achieve an 8.5 where it's at. It would kind of have to be redesigned. Do I feel this is worth the price tag it's at? Absolutely, I do. I definitely feel like it's worth and machined as well as what the price point is of this device solid solid tank me using this i'm gonna be breaking a lot of mods because it's gonna keep teeple toppling and i'm not really a huge fan of teeple toppling i may use it i may not it's not something that would be a daily driver though there, there's just no way i'd much prefer a single coil rta for a daily driver than i would a dual coil but that's not saying that i wouldn't use something like this that is the google car right is that what it says on the side Look at that. I can't think of another RTA right now that's on the higher end of scale that has top airflow. There's really not that many. You'd be real hard pressed to find that. That's something you find in more of a mass production scale, OBS nano engine. Something like the Zeus RTA, and I've kept the real. Have you? Check it out.